So last week, the power rankings sat like this. We started with the Chiefs. Then we went to the Seahawks. Then the Packers. Then the Ravens. Then the Bills. Then the Patriots. Then the Steelers. Titans. Rams. Niners. Now let's look at the top end of our of our power rankings here. Chiefs, best team in the NFL. There's no reason for them to move. Seahawks, yep, second best team in the NFL, no reason to move. Packers took care of business as well. So the, the top three certainly stays. Baltimore takes care of business. The Ravens beat Washington 31-17. to Tough team to, uh, to beat like that. Ron Rivera, I mean, words cannot really describe what Ron Rivera is doing right now. He's, he's undergoing cancer treatments while coaching. He has three weeks of cancer treatments left, I believe, and he is uh, holding strong to the fact that he will continue to do that. The Buffalo Bills took care of business. Man, the Bills, I'll tell you this. Josh Allen, what a jump. I mean, I was talking about it, or I've talked about it every week, that the Bills could be the best team in the NFL. And it's the only thing holding them back, the only question mark, is can Josh Allen go from being a good quarterback or a prospective quarterback to a fully developed best quarterback in the NFL. And they have him right now. He's playing about as good as any quarterback in the NFL. He is the driving force. He is the absolute alpha and omega for this team. They go as far as he goes and man, he's gone. Uh, I've watched that entire game. What a performance from Josh Allen. He, I mean, he's, the leaps and bounds that he's taken, and the receivers he's got. Cole Beasley, I've never seen so many diving catches. I mean, these guys are playing their asses off for him, and I'm not even sure if the defense has gotten rolling yet. I mean, the defense still seems a bit suspect, and I've been hearing a lot of chatter that this is the best defense in the NFL. So if we see this team play like the best defense in the NFL, man, there's no telling what's going to happen with that team. So let's, let's go down a little further. So now, now it gets interesting, okay? So the Patriots were at sixth. I don't think you downgrade them that much here. I mean, this is an impossible spot. They play, first of all, they play the Chiefs. Second of all, they, they traveled on the day of the game. Junior high school teams do that. High school teams do that. I mean, when do you think the last time any of these Patriots players traveled on the same day of the game? On top of that, Cam Newton was out unexpectedly. So you have a guy who's out, and who's more important to an offense the way they play than Cam Newton? Like, let's say Patrick Mahomes is out. Yeah, you lose Patrick Mahomes, but you run the same offense. Cam Newton being out, the Patriots had to basically say, all right, we'll throw the entire playbook out, and let's just kind of wing it. So it's hard for me to be like, oop, they lost, demote them. We're going to demote them a little bit, but it's not going to be that much. So the other teams we have, Steelers, Titans, Rams, Niners. So Steelers, the Steelers, uh, their game was postponed. So their game, so Tennessee and the Steelers game was postponed, so it's hard to move them as well. Uh, then we go to the Rams. The Rams play the Giants. We know how good the Giants are. The Rams take care of business there, 17-9. Not exactly the most impressive victory, but you know, you got to beat whoever's in front of you. Uh, then we go to the, the 49ers. The 49ers get slapped up by the Eagles in a weird spot, um, in a really weird spot there. Nick Mullins, terrible, terrible performance. Nick Mullins may have cost himself that Matt Flynn money. Nick Mullins, all he had to do was play really well while Garoppolo was out. Really just this game. Sunday night football, if he puts on a performance, he probably could have secured a 40 to $50 million deal. But now he looked so bad, I don't know if he separated himself very much at all from backup quarterbacks in the NFL. So the Niners are going to get taken out of here. For sure. The rest of the teams, I, I don't see how you can move these teams. I really don't. Now, let's take a look at what else we got. Let's go to chat real quick. What's up? Uh, Giants are bad. Yeah, the Giants are terrible. The Giants are one of the worst teams in the NFL, for sure. So let's look at who possibly could get moved up. The Browns could get moved up. The Bucks could get moved up. The... Uh, all these other teams are awful. The Saints could get moved up. Mm, the Colts could get moved up. And that's really about it. So, uh, and the Cardinals were in the conversation earlier this year, but they got slapped up by Carolina, so, you know. So, let, let's take a look. So, the Patriots at six. Again, it's, it's really tough for me to move this, these people in the power rankings because I'm sitting here and I'm staring at them, and 
it's hard for me to move any of these guys. I mean, the Patriots with Cam Newton, they probably put, like, who am I going to move up, right? I can't move the Steelers up, can't move the Titans up. They didn't even play. But I can't move them down. They're undeserving to move them down. So we're kind of stagnant in the power rankings this week. Now, the question is, do I move up the Saints? Do I move up the Bucks? Do I move up the Browns? All are relatively deserving. The biggest drop so far is from the Saints. The Saints at one point, I think, were like number three on my power ranking. Three or four. And they dropped totally off after the Raiders game. And the Detroit game was a really good game for New Orleans. I think it completely ended the Drew Brees talk. It completely ended the Saints are shit talk. Now, look, the Lions are nothing special. But the fact that they could come back from 14 down and march back the way they did to dominate the game, pretty impressive stuff. The Bucks win an impressive fashion. Hmm. With the Saints beating the Bucks, I think that gives the Saints a little bit of an edge as far as like who could be 10. The Browns, I mean, they, look, the Browns are 3-1. and one. You know, the Browns have kind of put up or shut up here. I think the Browns are bad, or not or not that they're bad. I, really, I don't think the Browns are very good. I don't think they're a true contender. So I'm kind of biased, I guess, in that aspect. If the Saints were playing the Browns, I would think the Saints were going to win. If the Saints were playing the Bucks, they already have one. So I think we have to move the Saints back in here. I think we move the Saints back in here because the Saints are doing one of those things where they're winning games they're not supposed to. They had like seven injuries the day before the game, or even, maybe even the day of the game. They were missing Marshawn Lattimore, Janoris Jenkins, Michael Thomas. They are missing everybody. And they still come out and play well. And that's a good thing. You know, when you're, when you're not up to your highest level, Whenever you're not, you don't have all your players, you don't have, like Green Bay. Like Green Bay's doing all this stuff without Devontae Adams. They're doing all this stuff right now without Devontae Adams, without Lazar. I mean, they they are, they're, they're just putting the pieces together, but somehow they are dominating. Uh, so, you know, I take that into account, and to me, those things are impressive. So I'm, I'm going to give the Saints the nod here. Honorable mention goes to the Browns and the, uh, the Bucks. Either one of them could have been in there. So this is the new top 10. I say new, not much has changed. You're looking at the Chiefs stay the same, Seahawks stay the same, Packers, Ravens, Bills. So everything changed to stay the same, except for the Saints. And 6, 7, 8 really didn't play, in my opinion. Like 6, 7, 8 really didn't play because of the Cam Newton stuff, and then Pittsburgh and Tennessee literally didn't play. The Rams win, but an unconvincing win. So should they be bumped up? Nah. Saints gets a good win to get back into the top 10, but is it good enough of a win to get them moved to like seven? I don't know about that. I mean, Detroit is pretty bad. So this is uh, this is the new top 10 we'll be rolling with in two week five. Going to chat here. Does Cam Newton have the virus? Yeah, Cam Newton tested positive for COVID, and that's why he had to sit out. So he he uh, he was out, but I think he's only supposed to miss one game. So he should be playing the next game. But yeah, he, he does have the virus. Uh, New England, they sip, they separated like travel between all the people who could have come in contact with Cam Newton and then the people who didn't. So they're trying to quarantine. Uh, Tennessee has not had any more virus uh, positives since they first got tested. Minnesota obviously doesn't have any. So... So it's all, it's all kind of seemingly under control here uh, as far as the NFL goes. So hopefully that'll put a kibosh on it. Hopefully that'll be it. The Saints had a positive test before their game, and it was kind of concerning. But it turns out it was a, it was a false positive. So it was, a, it was actually a negative test. So there was word that the Saints may have may have had a corona outbreak, but it looks like that is not the case. So, so that's good for there. So hopefully the season gets underway. I'm really kind of surprised at how... The NFL seems to not to not have a contingency plan at all for the virus. You would think that they would have built in like two weeks at the end of the season to put these games. Because the, the notion that we're not going to have... Hey! Thank you very much, Moneyball, for the sub. Thank you very much, Moneyball. I appreciate that sub, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. We're subscribed for five months. Amazing scenes. But the idea, this notion that... The NFL is not going to have any canceled games the entire year. I think it's just crazy. So why would you not have bookended the season with like one or two weeks where you can put these extra games in and not worry about delaying the playoffs, not worry about delaying the Super Bowl, 
not not worrying about how you're going to mix in the bye weeks and all that stuff. So, you know, I trust the NFL can get it can get it handled, even though they've been absolutely terrible at handling literally everything else that's happened in the past decade. But we'll see how that goes. So there are your there are your power rankings, ladies and gentlemen.